All right, good evening. At camp last year, uh, I was being judged based on how long I would do my sermon, and I told the judges in good uh, Baptist history, I should just preach forever. And they didn't seem to appreciate that, so I'll just do that to you tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Jude, thir- Jude 17 is where I'm going to be preaching today. Uh, Jep 17 through 25. All right. Jude 17 through 25. All right, verse 17 is, But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should walk after their own ungodly lusts, that these be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. But ye, be, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And is, of some have compassion, making a difference. And others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy, to the only wise God our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Amen. All right, and I'm going to pray. Dear Lord, I thank you for having us here today in your church, Lord. Uh, I thank you for us getting us here safely, Lord, and uh, I pray for those who did not, uh, were not so safe, Lord. Uh, I pray that you would help me to preach from your word, Lord, and preach from the Holy Spirit, and uh, bless today, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so the first, uh, the book of Jude was written uh, just to Christians uh, all around that had begun to uh, uh, be distracted but from the from their purpose as Christians, we, uh, the teens learned in Sunday school about you know we have a mission uh, after we're saved. We have a mission to do uh, to do God's will and to glorify Him and all. And uh, so the point of Jude is really laid out uh, in verse three. It says, "Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needed for me, uh, needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should deliver or that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints." Uh, and as Christians, we must never forget that it is our job to contend for the faith and uh, to save lost souls from uh, from hell. And uh, let's see. The problem with having a tablet is that it keeps shutting off on you. <laughs> All right. So verse 17 says, But, beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ in 18, how they, they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should not who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. So basically he starts out in verse 17, he says, never forget the word. Uh, The devil would often have us to be disarmed uh, from our word, from our sword that God has given us. And so ultimately, if we we are defenseless, we we are just that, we are defenseless. We we don't have any uh, way to attack against the devil or anything like that. Like if, imagine if uh, Moses had walked up to Pharaoh and Pharaoh said, well, show me a sign. And he said, "Um, well, uh, about that, you know, that wouldn't have worked out so well. And... So many times, especially myself, I know I, I go out and I'm like, I really wish I had a verse for that, and I'm sure there's one in there, but I just don't know it, you know. Or I'll know a verse, and I'm like, here we go, I got a twig right here, check out this worm, you know. But that's all I got for you. <laughs> so, so never forget the word, because that's what God's given us, God's given us to guide us through our life. Um, and let's see. So. He, t- he, ta- he tells us in the last times, and I don't know whether these are the last times, you know, I, I can't, nobody can so- know for certain, but I can tell you that it says, and never forget the last times that there will be mockers, and I can tell you that there are mockers uh, in, in our midst today, and uh, either, either un- non-Christians who would say, you know, well, I'm, I'm, you know, the, the Bible, it doesn't really mean anything and all that stuff, but you, you would expect somebody who's unsaved not to believe the Bible. In fact, the Bible tells us they don't understand the things of the Spirit of God, but uh, I think this verse tends to talk about uh, Christians who are mocking, you know, who say, well, you know, that tradition, you, you follow the Bible, that's, you know, that's silly. You, you, you sing those old hymns and, you know, you, you act this way, they think that's silly and they, you know, they mock. And, you know, we've got to beware of that uh, or beware of it in, all, in our own life. Let me tell you, you'll never win somebody to God by mocking them or mocking their practices. So be wary of mockers. And it says the ungodly or, or those who follow their own ungodly lusts. And uh, I sin, and we sin, and everybody sins, but it's one thing to sin and then seek reconciliation, but it's another to just sin and just be held captive by those lusts and not really care and just continue to, you know, live in that sin. 
So I'm taking too much time on this two verses. <laughs> so, all right, so verse 19. They said, These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the Spirit. Uh, it talks about, you, you see, I think children are the best way, place to see sin, uh, you know, very openly, just because they're just, they don't have the same lying capabilities as adults. So you watch children, and you have the two types of children who go in, like, for instance, in the nursery or something, they'll reach into a purse or something and grab the mints, and they'll, you know, they'll have their little mints, and they'll run off into a corner, and they'll be, you know, you know filling their face with mints. And then you'll have the other type of person who will go up there and they'll try to take one of the mints and then the, the first person will refuse them and they'll run off and they'll pout in the other corner. You know, we have the types of people who separate themselves so that they can go sin you know, and do their own thing and uh, be on their own. And then you have the type who can't, uh, can't join other people and so they, they have you know, that, that pity uh, for themselves. You know, Pat, Dad was talking about at the graduation, they have uh, selfish pride and uh, selfish pity. You know, they're both rooted in the same thing, but they have slightly different uh, manifestations. But it's, it's that separation. And uh, the thing about the separation, he mentions, is that if you're in a crowd with sinners, you're not going to separate yourself from the sinners necessarily, unless you're a Christian, but this is talking about the sinners. So as a sinner, you would not separate yourself from other sin- excuse me, sinners to sin. So the idea here is, is that you're among Christians, yeah. and so then you're sinning, and that's what makes you want to separate. So if you're among people... And you know they're lined up with the Bible, and you really don't like their presence. That's an, you know that should be a, a warning light for you. Hmm. All right. Yeah. All right. It, it talks about uh, sensual. That has a sort of a different connotation nowadays. But what it really means is uh, the, the word means basically uh, be, belonging to breath, which means you know as, as humans we have we have the, the physical body, we have our soul, which is our life in us. Uh, just like an animal, and then we have the spirit that comes alive when we are saved. Well, having this belonging to this breath is basically, you know, that just that that flesh, that instinct in us that would have us do, you know, just follow, like I said, ungodly lusts. And uh, so that's what it means, you know, separating yourself just so you could be, you know, fleshly and not really care about the spiritual part of your body. So it talks about beware of those who separate themselves, uh, and um, you know, having not the spirit. So verse twenty. Be ye beloved, building up yourselves uh, on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Uh, our job as Christians is, again, not to mock each other, not to deride each other and break each other down, but to build each other up on our holy faith, uh, praying in the Holy Ghost, and using, you know, the, the Holy Spirit uh, is working, it needs to be working in us as we build each other up. And, um, and that, especially that last part, praying in the Holy Ghost is essential, because if what you're doing, even if you're trying to be helpful, if you're trying uh, to help others and you're not in the Holy Ghost, then you're really not helping them at all. And it is important to have Holy Ghost in everything that you do. Uh, 21, keeping, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. Can I say, I, I need the mercy of God all the time, <laughs> yeah, right. as many of us do. Um, but uh, keeping ourselves in the love of God and looking for the mercy. Uh, this is mercy. Uh, we, need, we all need mercy for ourselves. And uh, we should also see that through the love of God that there are people all around us who need uh, mercy as well. Like, you know, I see people all the time you know, at, at work or on the road or something, and I don't think about it generally. But you think that they need God's mercy because they're, they're more than likely, they're going to uh, eternal damnation, and they need God's mercy. So we need to have the love of God and say, you know, I, I, I want to just help you right here. You know, I, I want to help you, show you the mercy of God. Hmm. At verse 22, and some have compassion making a difference. Compassion is this word, it, it means, uh, in the Webster, it almost has the connotation that if, if you had a lifelong enemy and he was finally defeated, finally brought to his knees, and here he was suffering and he's defeated and he's just at the lowest point of his life. The compassion is looking at that and having pity, almost joining in his suffering, uh, just out of uh, love for, just, you know, out of compassion for him. And uh, so we need to see other people who are unsaved and say, I was just there for, you know, I was, I was right there heading to the same place uh, until God saved me, and I need to have compassion on that person. And I need to get out of my box and help them out. And, uh, and then it doesn't say just having compassion. It says making a difference. When people come in here, we can look at them and say, oh, you poor thing. And then they can hear the word and you know, they can leave without ever really any of us made a difference for them. But uh, compassion isn't the key. We have to make a difference in their life. And uh, you know, we really have to uh, sometimes do more rather than just you know, feel compassion. Yeah. Uh, verse 23 and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. So if you had a fireman and they went to a building, they wouldn't just look at the building and, um, 
Yeah, I, I can't imagine they have some fear uh, when they look at that building on fire. They don't want to go in there structurally and sound. There's fire and poisonous uh, toxic fumes and all this stuff. Nobody wants to do that. So it's, it's going to be fearful. I, I don't like going up to people, especially people I know. <laughs> That's the most, uh, most fearful for me is people I know and saying, hey, are you certain that if you died right now, you would go to heaven? That's the most difficult for me. Uh, but God says, or Jude rather, he says, he says, despite the fear, we need to save, uh, save you know, we need to have, bring people to Christ, to pull them out of the fire, hating even the garment spotted by the flesh. Because if you had a fireman, you know, he comes out of a building, he has, you know, has, he has people in his hands, and this one guy, you know, he's, his, hand, his clothes are on fire, so they, they uh, stop, drop, and roll, and, you know, blow him, or uh, get him well wet and stuff, put out the fire. But this other person over here that just have, you know, a couple of flickers, you know, flames, it's, you know, it's no big deal. No, that's not how a fireman works. It's like, you've got a fire, we're going to put it out. I don't care how big it is because, you know, that spark started something like that. So uh, we, need, we, we can't just say, okay, now that you're saved, you know, you're good. You, you don't need to worry about the flesh. It'll, you know, God will take care of it when you're dead. That's not how it really works. Uh, we, we have to, you know, not, uh, not hating the person but hating the, the flesh that we see in their life and uh, try to help them, teach them with compassion and all, uh, teach them to... Uh, build them up. <laughs> All right. Verse 24. Uh, now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forever. Amen. We have to remember that whatever we do, we've got to do it to the glory of God. Uh, if you try to do something for yourself, you may do a lot of good. And, you know, uh, the Bible talks about in the end when, when we're doing, going through the judgment, uh, that you will have goods, you know, you have, you have good works that'll go, and they'll, they'll go through the furnace. But it says those have, that have not been done for the glory of God, those will be burnt up. And, you know, some Christians tend to have the idea of, well, I haven't done anything for God, but then nothing will be burnt up. Or others just say, you know, they don't realize the fact that all that they're doing, they're doing for themselves, and it will be burnt up. We have to remember that whatever we do, we have to do it to the glory of God. Um, a quick example of that is they had... During World War II, the, the Germany made a really, really incredible ship called the Bismarck. And it was just, it was the biggest ship that had ever been made, or at least battleship that had ever been made up to that point. And it was really glor- glorious and all this stuff. Well, when it finally went on, or when it finally met its end, uh, the rudder was destroyed. And the captain was still at his, uh, it was, he was still at the helm. He could still, con- you know, he, he was still in a position of authority. You know, Christ is still in our hearts, but he couldn't do anything. He wasn't getting any glory for the action as it just sat there and spinning around in circles because it couldn't control itself. It looked great even on the outside, at least at first, but if he couldn't control it, he wasn't getting any of the glory. It was useless to anybody. And uh, eventually, the enemy just be- was able to take, pick it apart. Fortunately, it was a bad guy ship, so you know that was okay. <laughs> but in our life, we can look great on the outside, but God, and God is in our, you know, in our heart. But if he isn't in control... Then and he's not getting any glory. Then we're useless. You know, we can look great, but we're useless. And uh, I think that, you know, I think that Jude, uh, it, it's a good thing to go through occasionally just to see. Okay, where where am I? You know, where where uh, my mission is here, but where has where have I gone off course uh, in my past? Thank you. Amen. Amen. Yeah, appreciate that.